All right, this sermon's entitled, Non-Soul Winners Are Walking in Darkness. I'd like to open up with prayer, and then with a few verses. All right, dear God, thank you for giving us your word. Thank you for allowing us to see what your word says on this very subject. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I'm going to go over the gospel real quick, because I need to do this, because there are lots of lost people that come. There's just uh, lots of lost people out there, period. There are people out there that have added something to faith in Christ, and there are people out there that have not believed on, on, on Christ for the real, you know, offer of eternal life as a gift. So I'm just going to go over the gospel real clear, make it very simple, and I'm going to cover a, f a few of the um, very important um, aspects of the gospel. Number one, the gospel is the good news, that God has sent his son out of love. He loves the whole world. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins. Now, Jesus Christ was sinless. He had no sin. He committed no sin. He couldn't even sin. Okay, not in word, thought, and deed. Now, we're sinners, and sin is not just what people, you know, think it is. Sin is, goes a lot deeper than what most people think it is. You know, like for instance, oversleeping can be a sin. Overeating can be a sin. Being messy, being sloppy, you know, having poor hygiene, you know, misspelling a word, all these things. Sin just means to miss the mark. And yeah, there are big, gigantic sins out there. Covetousness, idolatry, drunkenness, lust, fornication, all those things are sin. Lying, cheating, pride, it's all sin. But see, Jesus Christ came to die for all of our sins. And that's why he cleanses us from all sin, it says in 1 John 1, 7. We're going to look at that in a minute. He was buried, and then he rose again. Now, you can look at it like this. He buried our sins with him. Our sins went into the grave with him, and you know what? They're not coming back. Because the Bible says, For as far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Jesus Christ was buried, and then he rose again three days later. He did this to proclaim the message of salvation by grace, through faith alone. And now this is how you know you, that you're going to heaven. Because God is the one that raised Jesus up from the dead, and God will raise a believer up as well. So he gives eternal life as a gift. It's a free gift by God's grace. And one, one just has to simply receive this gift. And this is why soul winning is so simple, and this is why it's so inexcusable to not be a soul winner. It's because it's simply believing on Christ. John 3.36, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. In John 6.35, it says, Anyone that believes on him will never thirst. Okay? So if you don't believe on Christ, you're still condemned. You're still under condemnation. You're still headed for hell if you've never been saved. But if you believed on Christ, you're saved and sealed and secure from that moment on. And you'll never lose your salvation. Acts 16.31, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Because salvation is so simple, it is inexcusable for a believer not to be, not to be a soul winner. It's, so, it's, 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 it's utterly inexcusable. Okay. Now, if you're, if you're believing in a false gospel, then yeah, I could see why you wouldn't be a soul winner. Because the, the repent, repent and believe gospel is just not the gospel. Repentance simply means turn from the idol, turn from the religion, turn from dead works, turn from nothing, turn from unbelief, turn from atheism, turn from Islam, turn from Calvinism, turn from Arminianism, turn from lordship, turn from all these false ways of salvation, and then believe on Christ. You know, you turn, it's repent and believe the gospel. It's nothing to do with works, okay? But you know what? You can just leave the word repent out because it's not mentioned in the book of John anywhere. So the gospel is simple. Now, let me prove to you right now that the gospel and soul winning are... Ba basically, icons of light. Turn to First John chapter one. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our and our hands have handled the word of life. Now underline some of these words. Underline the words "word of life." Okay, for life was manifested. Underline manifested, and life. Okay, and we have seen it. Okay, underline the under. If you if you if you want to underline it, underline the word "seen." I'm going to jump back and look at all these words. Okay, and how they relate to life and, and light and, and, and how they oppose darkness. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness and shew unto you that eternal life. That's the whole point of soul winning, is to tell people how to be saved. Okay, which was with the, the Father. And of, of course, once you're saved, you're always saved. I, I forgot to put that. You can't be lost. You can't lose it. You can't give it back. The Bible says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Okay, so you're, you're, you're secure. You're, you have triple security. I'm going to point that out. Okay, for which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you that ye may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. This then is, is, is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you that God is light. So whenever you're declaring the gospel, whenever you're declaring the message of salvation, you are representing the God of light. God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. 
Now, if there, if a people, if, if people out there in the church, whoever you are, the believers, if they're not a soul winner, if you're not doing any, everything you can to share the gospel, you're in darkness. You're in utter darkness. And I don't care what anyone says. I don't care how moral a person is. I don't care how good they act. I don't care how many sins they've repented of. If you're not a soul winner, you're walking in darkness, and you're only fooling yourself if you think otherwise. Okay? Now, the God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. So every soul winner out there is, is in the light. Every non-soul winner is in darkness, and they're wicked. And they're, I'm not saying they're, they're, that their salvation is in question, but you know what? They're wicked as hell. Period. They're carnal. You know? People out there that, you know, they're just as carnal as can be if you're not a soul winner. I don't know, that's the way it is. But if we walk in light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. What's the solution to the problem? The solution is 1 John 1 9. You need, to, you need to stop being in the darkness. You need to get out of the darkness and confess your sin of being a, non -la a lazy non soul winner. Okay? You need to confess that and you need to be a soul winner, period. Okay? Now, turn to John 5. There's no excuse for this. It's pathetic. You know, it's so simple to, to, to get the gospel out. Just write the gospel out on a piece of paper. That's all I did was read off, read off this paper here. This gigantic gospel sign I made, you can, put, you can put it anywhere. Put it on your car. Put it, in, put it anywhere. Put, you can put them on people's cars, and, then, and then, then people will be able to read it. Because people are in darkness. This world is in darkness. You've got every ism out there teaching a false way of salvation. You've got Catholicism is pure darkness. You know? You've got the Church of Christ, the, the Pentecostal straight out of hell church. You got all this falseness, falsehood out there, and, and you know, false ways, and it, it's just sad. That just tells you the world's in darkness, and it's our it's our responsibility as free grace believers to get people out of darkness. Okay, Matthew chapter five, look at verse twelve. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were, were before you. Ye are the salt of the earth, and if the salt have lost its, his savor, notice it says his savor. It's talking about a person. Wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing. Now this is Jesus' way of saying, if you're not a soul winner, if you're not being the salt or being the light, you're good for nothing. You're in darkness. Okay? But to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. So he's talking to us. We're the light of the world. A city that is set on an hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick... And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. So we need, we need to be a light. We need to be witnesses. We need to go out there to the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Okay? Now it says, let your light so shine before men. So let it shine before people. Okay? That they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Once again, your works don't have anything to do with your salvation. It's just for other people to see so that, and, you know, they need, as a result of seeing it, you give them the gospel, and then they'll, if they, if they believe, they'll be saved as well. So my, that, that's the point of um, life, basically, is to be a soul winner. Number one, you need to get saved, and we're saved by grace through faith alone in Christ alone. And then after that, we should be soul winners. And the world is not in, light, in the light. If they're not walking in the light or walking after the light, if they're not soul winning, period. Now turn to First John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2, it talks about this. Look at verse 14. I have written unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because ye are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. Okay? He's talking to mature believers now. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world... The lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. You know, what's the will of God? It's to believe on Christ. You're going to abide forever. So what he's saying is that don't be in the world. Be, be a, a part of, be, you know, apart, you know, away from the world, and be a soul winner. Let your light so shine. And those that are not soul winners are in darkness, no matter what anyone says. I don't care what anyone says. It's, this is the truth. So that's all I have. Dear God, thank you for giving us your word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says on this very, sub, very important subject. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.